with the resurrection of Christ, life has changed. Life is different with the resurrection. By the resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ opens to us the gates of paradise, invites us to eternal life, and bestows upon us a life of grace. He came into this world as a humble child to be with us and to break down the wall of enmity between us and God, to unite heaven and earth, to establish a living, vibrant relationship with God. And by virtue of that, also to give us life, which he grants to us by his resurrection. So now our goal in life is centered on that. Our goal, our priorities, what's most important for us, they're all centered on that vibrant relationship with God and pursuing everlasting life living a life of grace. And we ask ourselves, how do we do this? There are still many things that lie deep in our souls. There are many things that prevent us from drawing closer to God. Today's Gospel reading is one that we could very well understand. The paralytic was paralyzed for 38 years and for most of those years he laid near the pool waiting for the angel to come and disturb the water so that he would be healed. And he saw many people come and go he saw many miracles performed, but they weren't for him. He could never get to the water in time before someone else would get there before him. Of course, this didn't happen in a vacuum. Those 38 years weighed on him. Seeing other people walk and enjoy life, and he was paralyzed. During those 38 years, seeing people come and be healed, and he remained in the same condition. Our Lord saw him, and what's remarkable, most of the time when our Lord performs a miracle of this nature, he asks the person, do you want to be healed? Or the person themselves, ask our Lord for a miracle. In this case, Jesus saw what was in this man's heart. Jesus saw the 38 years this man asked for a miracle. Jesus knew that this man, of course, wanted to be healed. And he instructed him to stand up and to take up his bed and walk. Our Lord sees what's in all of our hearts. He sees the clutter. He sees the little faith. He sees the pride. But he also sees our effort to overcome all this. He sees how we strive successfully, unsuccessfully, try to break our evil habits. He knows deep what's in our hearts. He alone is the only one who knows what's deep in our hearts. Even we ourselves don't completely know. During the great fast, we come to a better understanding. And sometimes that understanding gives us pain because we see how weak we truly are. But in the end, we don't completely see what's deep in our hearts. Only our Lord does. 
And our Lord gives us all the things that we need in this life so that we would be saved. He understands the joys that we should experience and also the afflictions that we must bear in order to be deemed worthy to partake of eternal life. St. Theophan the Recluse says that the condition of the soul influences the health of the body. Of course, we know the connection between body and soul is very strong. And if one is ailing, the other one is afflicted. Think about the pain that we would feel, the physical pain, and how we are required to show patience and perseverance and trust, how the soul is affected by them. And likewise, conversely, when we experience anger and it just consumes us, our heart races, our blood pressure increases, our physical health is affected by what we experience in our soul. They're intimately connected, St. Theophan the Recluse says. And when we strive to fill our life with the light of God, then our bodies likewise benefit greatly. But if we neglect to do that, then likewise our physical health suffers because we separate ourselves from God, the source of life. You know, you can take a flower and cut it and you, re you separate it from its roots and it still looks fine. It may last like that, some flowers may last like that several days, but eventually it will wilt and die. And most especially for us, we understand that if we are separated from the source of our life, we eventually wilt and die. We become paralyzed when we separate ourselves from God. We want to do good works, but we can't. We want to be patient and understanding. We want to learn to forgive. We want to love selflessly. But all these things are impossible for us. We are paralyzed by little faith, paralyzed by pride, paralyzed by passions and attachment to this world. If we think about the time that we spend on earthly cares and compare that to what we spend to, to nourish our soul each day, sometimes that comparison would bring us much pain and be very really revealing in a bad way. And then we wonder why we can't walk according to the commandments. Then we wonder why all the heresies and the false teachings of this world suddenly become something that we understand and weaken our own resolve in the faith. So let us, brothers and sisters, having come to this point in the liturgical year and hearing the great tidings of the resurrection of Christ and understanding how life changes because of the resurrection, let all of that affect us and influence us to likewise change our lives. Let us work with God's grace so that we are not paralyzed <coughs> by our sins, by our shortcomings, by our appetites and passions. But let us walk and do good deeds. Let us sacrifice. Let us forgive. Let us pray. Let us love selflessly. Because when we do all of this, we walk the path 
towards salvation, but we also receive fulfillment. What our Lord offered this paralytic today was precious, not because he gained physical health, but at the very end of the reading, we hear, Sin no more, for you have been made whole. Wholeness is what we all desire, to feel complete, to feel fulfilled, to feel human as God intended us to feel. That is what's most precious, and that's why we persevere to overcome our sins. That's why we strive to defeat evil and temptations. That's why we pray and we fast and we labor, labor endlessly for the sake of drawing closer to God so that we can become whole. We don't earn this. We don't gain it simply by our efforts. But when we show all of these efforts, like the faith of this paralytic today of 38 years of not giving in to despondency, when we show our efforts, we may even come to the time when our Lord grants us our miracles even without us asking, because He would see all of our strivings. He would see how we have worked and labored to overcome. He would see what's deep in our hearts. Oh Lord, release us. Release me from my paralysis. Release me from my little faith and pride. Release me from all the constraints of my physical appetites and passions. Release me and grant me to be whole so that I may truly live. Amen. Um.